Some moving pieces in a presidential campaign, fundraising, gaining enough support, making sure you don't lose, lose key supporters while campaigning. And for Republicans hoping to be the candidate, the Iowa State Fair is the one event that you really can't afford to miss, a trip that could very well make or break you. And tonight, Capitol reporter for Saunders is joining us live from Iowa with the Hawkeye State uh, very much there uh, in focus. And, I, you know, why does it carry so much weight in this primary forest. That's a great question. I'm sure a lot of people in Florida right now are watching this going, why am I watching the Iowa State Fair? Why does this matter to me? Well, the simple answer is it's behind me. It is not the fried butter. It is the people. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be here over the next few days. In fact, in totality, if you look at those that came out just in 2022, it was more than a million people. Beyond the butter cow and that oh so bad for you fair food, you'll find the other reason Iowans flock to the Iowa State Fair. To have this opportunity to visit with the candidates. Retail politics over the next week. Almost all this cycles Republicans, even some Democrats, here to meet, greet, and try and sweep caucus goers off their feet. I'm pretty much just here for politics, yes. People like Carly Stee, who has yet to back a candidate. The fair, her farm, and she's eager to harvest a winner. The face-to-face -face politics of it really helps. It really helps you understand, like, would I want this person around? Others have come from as far away as Florida, searching for something hard to come by in the Sunshine State. FaceTime. I like the way they do politics here. It's uh, eye to eye, you know, a face to face, a handshake. That's the old fashioned way to do it. And that's how they do it here. And we wanted to be a part of that. It wasn't always this way. The fair's relevance in presidential politics began in the 70s. That's when the Iowa caucus gained its first in the nation status, which it's tried to hold on to ever since. But the thing about the fair is they all come to you. And so what a huge opportunity if you're a candidate uh, running for office to be able to meet with people from all over the state and uh, interact with them in an informal way, answer their questions. While exposure here matters for everyone, it's particularly important for those long shot candidates who are tight on cash and media attention. Certainly, if you're a Republican, if you don't start in Iowa, you've already lost the election before you even start. White House hopefuls like Perry Johnson are spending days here relying on handshakes and shoe leather to make an impact. And in Iowa, it's retail politics. So if you don't want to work that, your chances of doing well in Iowa in this nomination process become markedly reduced. A chance no one can really take this cycle with so many GOP candidates running. Not even the apparent frontrunner, former President Donald Trump, passing up the fair this year, planning to make a stop Saturday. Now, Paul, I'll tell you, this is the last time you're probably going to see me well rested. That's because we have a jam packed schedule. In fact, right now, Vice President, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence is speaking on the soapbox. We're also going to see Vivek Ramaswamy out here, Francis Suarez, Nikki Haley, and of course, Governor Ron DeSantis as well. So I'm going to be pretty busy over the next couple of days. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially a political convention there in the field of dreams, Forrest. Uh, by the way, how is Governor DeSantis selling his latest removal of yet another elected official uh, here in Florida to those coveted caucus voters there in Iowa? How is that translating there? The translation is largely what we saw in Florida. He is making a case that he is tough on crime and he's not going to allow what he says are uh, prosecutors that are backed by George Soros or uh, have some kind of stance where they're weak on prosecutions or mandatory minimums. Uh, and so that's how he's trying to spin this uh, as he goes out onto the campaign trail. But really what's interesting here is the strategy, which is the earned media attention from big moments like this. This is largely what we saw back in 2022. It's a page ripped right from that reelection playbook where he makes a big statement and does something that gets a lot of headlines and then turns around and uses that to campaign. So that is largely what we're seeing in terms of strategy out here on the campaign. Yeah, field. well, it's not translating in the poll numbers. The recent numbers not good for the governor. Um, one national poll has him now in third place nationally, falling behind uh, Vivek Ramanswamy, who seems to be surging. Chris Christie claims he's about to surpass DeSantis in New Hampshire. And this uh, signal survey that came out has DeSantis polling at 2% with black voters, which puts them essentially in last place with that group in the GOP field. So uh, the war on woke, at least, does not seem to be working. Uh, does this reboot have any other message other than that in Iowa? 
Yeah, I mean, we've seen that reboot play out um, with a more of a focus on the economy. I mean, DeSantis is now starting to hone in on some of those more traditional kitchen table issues. Uh, you might remember uh, James Carville uh, famously said back in the 90s, it's the economy stupid. Well, that is something that he has really been touting in his message recently uh, and pivoting more uh, kind of towards the economy and how to fix inflation and not so much hitting those things about fighting wokeism. Uh, that's still there. It's still embedded in the message, but it's not front and center. And so we're going to see how this all plays out now in Iowa as Governor DeSantis makes his stop here uh, at the Iowa State Fair and that ramp up to the January 15th Iowa caucuses. They will tell you they still feel like they're in a good place because they have such a strong ground game here. Uh, and they believe that will translate into actual caucus votes when the time comes. Paul. Uh, Jim Pat calendar for Saunders joining us live from Des Moines, Iowa tonight as we send it now to Chief Meteorologist.